Crossfire Bent Minnow, TT Switchblade, and the Zeric Fish Trap. Probably didn't even hit it in the bin. Hey everyone, Josh here from Bruce Vegas Fishing, Ubi the Audacity of Fishing Goodness. Alright guys, so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now, I wouldn't normally knock any of those lures, they're perfectly fine, but that's not what today's episode's about. Today I'm going to shoot you a couple of different lures that I've found quite successful recently uh, on Threadfin Salmon. So today we're going to go through them, we're going to do a little bit of a tackle talk, so let's get into it. But yeah, basically we're going to go through my top three lures that I use on a regular basis. They're my mojo lures, uh, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, I've, I've had really good luck on them so far. So we're going to dive into it, we're going to go through it. Two of them are hard bodies, one of them's a soft plastic. Let's jump straight in. First lure off the rank is a bit of a mojo lure for me. I quite like it, it's the Zeric Pyra. Now this is a 95mm hard body, shallow diving up to about one metre. It's got a tight rolling action. Now, normally I'll use this for flicking around pontoons or shallow drain mouths and, and creek entrances and stuff like that. Now, this is not what I've caught all my fish on, but I've caught a vast majority of fish recently on it and I've lost probably a couple of them at the same time. Now, obviously when you get it straight out of the packet, it comes uh, equipped with BKK hooks. They're just a standard hook. Uh, I have straightened the standard BKKs fresh out the packet, so what I normally do is I just upgrade them straight up out of the packet. I'll go through that in a second as to what terminal tackle I normally use. It has a myriad of applications basically, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, all I'm doing is normally drifting it into a location or working it back out of tight locations. So around pontoons, structures, pylons, stuff like that. You find that the bib style that it has on the front there, you can actually knock the pylons a fair bit without hooking up on that first treble. No, that's quite often what I'll do to get the bite. So it is rather successful. They do come in varying colors. I quite like these two colors here. I, I know the bottom one's a mullet imitation. I can't exactly tell you what the other ones are. I'll throw that up on the screen anyway. They're about $22, $20 retail from say your, your main tackle stores and stuff like that, BCF, so on and so forth. Great lure to have. I was quite surprised with it. It was one that I'd stumbled across while trying to get onto threadfin salmon, and the results I found, on so far have found, have actually been quite successful and quite a decent hookup rate just due to the size and the small profile. Another colour for it as well. It's a bone colour. And a little pup. It's not very big, but. Next we have the cheapest one of the lot, I guess you could say. Now this one retails for probably about 10 bucks from BCF. This is a Japanese brand Asari Sweeper. Now this is the 70mm standard diver. It's quite successful. It's a, a suspending slash sinking hard body with a shallow, or with a, you know, with just a standard dive on it. It dives to about three meters, I believe. It dives to about three meters. You've got the uh, XD version, or the, the heavier version, I guess you could say. Similar profile, a little bit fatter and a larger bib, obviously, for uh, getting to a deeper depth. And all these do, they have a pretty standard sort of stick bait the stick bait action. When you're basically retrieving it, I normally use a quite aggressive retrieve and imitate a prawn. So normally aggressive twerks and twitches and stuff like that. And just very sporadic in nature. So as to sort of recreate what a prawn or a fleeing prawn's gonna do. Now, I have actually had a lot of recent success on this particular lure and I've actually managed to split it open. Now, I don't know if that's the case for all of them, but all I've done basically is just put a bit of instant adhesive across there to get that <laughs> to keep me going through on that one. But good mojo lure nonetheless. 
Now, this one's quite a good soft plastic. I definitely rate these. These are the Holt Production Swim Prawn. I know a lot of people use these, but I know for sure, or I know for certain that they don't use them. They don't use them in the same way that I've been using them. Not to gloat or anything like that, but I've found that standard rigging of the lure with your standard jig head. It probably, it works pretty well in uh, deeper water applications where you say working a drain or something like that and you just roll, slow rolling it along the bottom with small hops and twitches and stuff like that. But the way that I'm using them is actually with a weedless, or well not weedless, sorry, is in a weightless application. So basically all I'm doing is rigging a decoy worm hook. The 4.0 style worm hook, straight up worm hook. And all I'm basically doing is just wigging, 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 rigging the old Holt production prawn on like so. This doesn't actually sim swim straight. You'll find that we're not trying to actually get it to swim straight. What we're trying to do is we're trying to imitate what a thread is actually chasing. So quite often on pontoons, wharves, uh, pylons, any sort of structure where uh, prawns are going to be, you quite often see them, they'll flee off, and when they flee, they'll go sideways. Yeah, when they flee, they actually quite often go sideways and they'll dart away from the pontoon. Those legs still actually swim through the water perfectly, but it looks exactly like a fleeing prawn. You're basically working it very sporadically, multiple twerks, twitches, and uh, pauses and stuff like that, letting it drift through under structure as well, where the threadies will quite often hold, especially to get out of current, they'll hold in any sort of location like that. And if you need to get into a tight cover, I found that running obviously a single hook as opposed to trebles, it doesn't often hook up or snag. If you wanted to, you probably could run it weedlessly. I've yet to try it in a weedless application. If you wanted to run a weedless weighted setup, that'd probably work fine, but then you're obviously gonna get it a little bit further down in the water column and you might run the risk of getting it snagged up. It's hard to say. Obviously weedless, you shouldn't get it snagged up, but you never know. Uh, multiple colors. I rate the white flash definitely a favorite color for me more so just because when i'm seeing those prawns click off the pontoon they don't look green they don't look like they've got white spot or anything like that that's not to say that they won't hit that sort of look it's just my observation so far definitely worth having some of these in your tackle box and it's definitely worthwhile thinking a little bit outside the box when you're using these prawns in this application, just because sometimes that will get the bite. Quite often I've found when they're sitting under tight structure like pontoons, wharves and stuff like that, they'll readily take one of these over any other style of hard body lure. Yeah, so quite often I'll flick these when they're hard up, tight in structure, just due to a high current situation, they're trying to sit right up next to a pole or something like that where they can get out of that current momentarily. They see something like this come past their face, all they've got to do is just drift out, smack it, and you're on. And then obviously using that single hook, quite often I've found that they actually pull up straight in the corner of the mouth. I've even jagged one in the shoulder so far. So I'll roll on some clips of that now, but very, very, very deadly. Uh, something I've just stumbled across, just, you know, testing things all the time. Ha oh, ha, look at that. Holt prawn right in the corner of the mouth. So glad to have worked these things out. You always want to think outside the box because you never know when, you know, when something's gonna work, <laughs> so to speak. All right, guys, so that's Top three lures for me. Honorable mentions definitely go to the Savage Gear Pop Walk. Now this is about $16, $17 retail lure from uh, BCF. Now this is a lure that I used uh, a few sessions back. I'm sure I'll put that video up in the description box below. But I got 10 thread pin salmon in one night. Seven of those were on this specific lure. Now the circumstances were fairly well. Uh, stacked, uh, easy to take advantage of. There was heaps and heaps of fish in this one location. And they were pretty well hitting almost anything, but they definitely did like that top water and they were sucking that down straight away. <laughs> you can see it just on the top of his head. Wow, what a good fish. Get a measure on him. Back. 
You can either work this in a uh, standard popper fashion, or just bloop it across the surface. I was t uh, twitching it and walking it across the surface, both of which are very successful, especially when you're in that circumstance where you can get them on top water. I mean, you don't have to, but it is so much more fun seeing them suck this off the surface and creating that massive barra buff that they do. So that'll definitely, is, it's definitely just worthwhile having that in your tackle box. Uh, and then last but not least, this one's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a random one. I did manage to get two fish on this so far. It's just a Laser Pro standard or shallow diver. It just dives up to one meter there. It's just got that real duck nose sort of, uh, duck nose, I don't know how you'd really describe it, but it's got a very sharp bib on it there. And it floats as well, so it's basically good for that shallow subsurface action. Obviously, once again, the threadies were pretty well stacked in the specific location where I was using this, so it is something that's worthwhile having in your tackle box, but you don't necessarily have to have it, have it in there. Obviously, you're still going to catch a fish on your crossfire bent minnows, your xeric fish traps, your TT switch blades. All of those lures are still very, very productive. In different circumstances and that. I personally, I haven't had much success on a bent minnow so far, but I would not rule it out. They're all good lures to have in your tackle box, but that's not what today's episode is about. Basically here to try and think outside of the box, because at the end of the day, if you try something new and it's more successful than what you've tried before, why not try it? So I mean, don't be so narrow-minded guys, you never know, something might, something might surprise you and you might actually end up having a better trip than you've had before just by trying something new, so always think outside the box. I've definitely done that a lot recently just because I've used a lot of the standard traditional lures that everyone else has recommended through podcasts, through other YouTube videos, and blogs and stuff like that, and I haven't actually had that much success. Like, I'm not afraid to admit that it's taken me 100 hours to get uh, one thready on a lure. Like it. It took me a lot of hours. Now, it's not just from lure selection, it is just from learning, from putting in the hours, from basically applying myself to that certain situation. So, don't get me wrong, those lures will work perfectly fine, and I'm sure if you've got confidence in using those lures, then definitely use those lures. But for me, I didn't have confidence in using those lures, and it may or may not have impeded me getting my first fish a lot sooner. But, main takeaway is, try something new out of the box and go with it. You never know, it might surprise you. All right guys, so let's quickly dive into the terminal tackle that I'm using. So basically, whenever I get a lure out of the box, I'm upgrading the trebles just because I don't like running the risk of pulling or stretching hooks, especially in circumstances where I'm using these smaller lures that aren't necessarily designed for the specific application that I'm using them for. So straight up, I'll go out, I'll get BKK fangs, and either run them in the is it, size of four is quite often one, uh, the size that I'll use. I believe these are a smaller gauge or smaller size. I can't remember exactly. I'm sure I'll be able to put it in the description box below. But basically, they come in a pack of seven. That'll get you at least three lures done. And it'll save you the heartache of catching a fish, uh, not you know, catching a fish, pulling hooks, something like that, because that's the last thing that you want to do is pull the lure straight out of the box, flick it, lose fish. I have, I have done that a couple of times now with Redfin Salmon, especially on the Pyras. I remember the very first time I used a Pyra, straight out of the box, BKK hooks, managed to stretch the hook and drop two fish at the same time, not the same time, managed to pull it out of the box. This first application I used it for, I dropped two fish and didn't realize that it actually stretched the treble, so definitely reduced hook up rate. Safe to just go high quality from the start it's going to cost you a little bit more, but it's going to save you a lot of heartache. Alright guys, with that being said, it is the end of the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment in the comment section below if you've got any specific lure choices that you use. I know a lot of people will recommend um, paddle tails, other types of vibes. There's plenty of vibes on the market these days. I know Nomad has their new Veritex out at the moment. I have yet to use that one. Once again, different application to what I'm using it for. I like being able to flick a lure and retrieve a lure. <laughs> I don't like teabagging fish. Uh, but yeah, so with that being said, it's the end of the video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, it's as easy as hitting this button up here, smash it, and I'll see you in the next one.
80-20, that's fishing. No, no in class. <laughs>